Hey everybody, this is our first AMA on our channel. We're excited to have BankX with us. Before we get started, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, thanks, I appreciate it. While I'm uh, Lance Parker, I'm the founder of BankX. I have uh, 20 years in technology. This is my fourth technology company. Um, and we're out to, to build the, what we think is the best stable coin that, uh, that's been released yet. So we've been working on it about a bit, about about a year of uh, research and development to get us to this point. Awesome. So, can you explain what BankX is and what you guys are hoping to achieve? Yeah. So, I think the 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 main distinction with with BankX is this concept that we call the individual created digital currency, which is the exact opposite of what you're hearing with central bank digital currencies, where uh, you'd have a central bank that has full control and centralized power of, of that currency. Um, so I think philosophically, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, from a market perspective, we are the first stable coin to pay you interest for minting a stable coin. So the idea that you own the collateral, you create the currency, you are earning the interest, um, you can leverage up and, and create the in type of income that you like, or you could stake in our certificate of deposit. Um, really, this idea of a stable coin for individual freedom that where you become the counterparty in every part of the banking relationship where it's just you and the blockchain. So we, we eliminate any aspect of what a traditional or legacy banking system might have where you do it all and you get all of the benefits. Well, my next question was going to be touching on that because you just mentioned you can earn, what was it, 5% for minting the stable coin. I was going to ask, how does your stable coin XSD differ from traditional stable coins like BUSD, USDC? I think people still don't have a full you know, grasp of uh, what an ELGO stable coin is, and uh, they, they, they think they're, they're both the same. Yeah, I think there's a... there's. There's sort of this uh, evolution of stable coins, right? You have the, the first stable coins like Tether where there was a dollar in the bank backing each Tether. And then, and then it was sort of this move to decentralization um, as they progressively uh, sort of enhance these stable coin protocols. So um, protocols like MakerDAO, they would back the stable coin with uh, another cryptocurrency but then you would have sort of the issue of, well, if the price of the underlying cryptocurrency were to fall, you would be liquidated. And, and then there was the fully algorithmic stable coin like, um, like Terra Luna that everybody is now familiar with, right? Where there is no collateral, but they use software rules and market forces to maintain the peg. And so the, the peg became the attack vector. So I think there's a lot of things we could probably talk about there. Um, and then there's this idea of a combination of everything. Um, and so that's what we're, we're, we're taking the best of what we've seen work in the market awesome. and adding our own uh, sort of special things that we're, we're doing and how we, how we pay interest for minting the stable coin. So you don't have to stake the stable coin with BankX just for creating it and having it in circulation, you're accruing interest. And so that's a key distinction on, on how we're doing that and, um, and how we actually pay those rewards. So um, I kind of went through a while, I kind of went through the history and I forgot, to, I, I missed your, your question on what, what, we were, <laughs> what we were covering there, but because I think it was like, well, people don't really, you know, see stable coins as far as, uh, you know, uh, really uh, as a thing to try to understand, but, yeah. you know, it is, these stable coins are very important to cryptocurrency because they hold the key to mass adoption. Definitely. And so that's, that's, you know, when we set out to do this, it's, it's with that thought of, we want to create a stable coin for individual freedom where you become the counterparty with every piece of, with every part of the, of the banking relationship um, with the idea that this is the key to mass adoption. Um, and, and so that I think really is uh I think answers the question that we were sort of going down the line with there. So can you walk us through the whole bank X process, uh, you know, from the start, how does it work? Yeah. So it's bank X is a 
partially algorithmic, meaning we have some capabilities like Terra Luna because it's proven that you know that that it can maintain the peg, but we're we're also collateral backed with other cryptocurrency. So basically, it's a dual token system. So we use the native blockchain. So let's say it's our Ethereum deployment or Pulse Chain deployment. And so you would use the native blockchain token. So an example, Ethereum, and then you would use our bank X token combined as the collateral to mint a hundred percent of that value in the XSD stable coin. So you go to our user interface, uh, connect your MetaMask wallet. It'll ask for permission to uh, use say that Ethereum and bank X you have in your wallet and you click uh, how much you want. And then you, you click on mint it sends that to the smart contract. So all of the collateral is held on the blockchain. So, oh. so no one has control of it except for you. So for you to get it back, you have to pay the XSD back in the system. So what our UI would do is send that collateral to the smart contract, and then it mints the XSD stablecoin, tracks your address okay. of how much you've minted so it can calculate that interest. And then it sends the XSD stablecoin to the same wallet. So the minting process is pretty straightforward um Definitely. and then you have a stable coin that's earning interest which which creates a lot of interesting things that you can, that you awesome. can do with so it. what networks is uh bank x running on is it multi-chain at first i thought it was just only on pulse chain but it sounds if you're using eth and bnb um you're going to be using multiple networks yeah so it is a multi-chain deployment i think the future is multi-chain because it is further decentralization. Like as we just saw with the beacon chain on Ethereum, yeah. uh, they had seven blocks that uh, didn't work right. And, and so they, you know, because of the different validator nodes had different versions. So you just never know what's gonna happen with the blockchain. Um, plus I think also uh, each of the blockchains have their own advantages and disadvantages. Like some are, are targeting NFTs or yeah. some are targeting say e-commerce. So the future for a stable coin is multi-chain. So to start, we will be with the top EVM compatible chain. So those are sort of the obvious ones, Ethereum, Binance, Avalanche, um, uh, and Pulse Chain, uh, to, to name sort of the top ones that we'll do. Um, so we would launch on Ethereum. Um, uh, we mentioned before we started that we, we are going to be on Pulse Chain. So we're doing a sacrifice phase on Pulse Chain, which I'm I'm going to announce here within the next days of all of that happening. So there's some some interesting things we're doing with that uh, deployment for BankX. Awesome. So to dive deeper into the BankX process, I saw that you guys had a loop ring, um, a loop ring, uh, you know, offer where you can process, yeah, process, and they didn't have any sort of liquidation. Can you dive into that? <clears throat> yeah. So so looping is a is a way to describe where. Um, which you might have seen with other protocols like Wonderland and, and MIM, uh, uh, magical internet money, where you know you would you would take collateral and then mint a stable coin. Now that you have a stable coin, you can buy more collateral to mint more stable coins. So you can effectively leverage your position. The problem is, is that there is liquidation, which is what a lot of the protocols have. So with our system, when you lock up the initial collateral. Um, it, it stays there and we have sort of this, we have this moving percentage of the native blockchain token and the bank X token, that's the collateral. If any one of those drops below the value of what the system needs, what we do is, is incentivize the market and the community with a return in the form of bank X tokens to add collateral to the system. Yeah. So you're never liquidated when you create the XSD stablecoin. And so it's an interesting proposition in that now that you have the stablecoin earning interest that you just minted by locking up your collateral, now you can go buy more collateral to mint more stablecoin. And now that stablecoin is also earning interest while it's in circulation. And so you can create the type of return that you like. Um, and if you like while I could yeah. give you a sense of how, how this works and how we're, we're paying it because uh, we based our economic principles on how we pay interest on the HEX protocol. So a lot of, you know, it's very, uh, very polarizing that, that protocol, but it's actually a, a genius way of 
inflating a cryptocurrency to pay rewards for staking. Yeah. And what we've learned from Hex is that when he when Hex inflates the currency 3.69% per year, they're actually getting a staking rate of 9.8%. Yeah, yeah. So the yearly net effect is that you have an, a, a deflationary token, right? Because you're inflating 3.69% and you're getting a staking rate, meaning that uh, that inflation is, is causing the behavior of staking nearly you know, three times the amount. So we use those same economic principles in the paying of interest for the stablecoin because we want to incentivize people to mint it and yep. to keep it in circulation. So because we're a partially collateralized stablecoin, meaning that there's a portion of native blockchain token and a portion of our token, which we pay the rewards uh, and interest. So we always are inflating the token less, uh, roughly one half of the amount of uh, BankX tokens that are staked uh, to create the stable coin. And so it's the same economic principles. And so that's how all of that works, Weil. And, and um, so we, we went through an economic audit to analyze exactly how this would work. So, so using the concepts that Hex has taught us, uh, we applied that to this partially collateralized stablecoin to effectively give you the same um, sort of payment of rewards that you would receive in Hex, but for also minting a stablecoin um, while and earning that while it's in circulation. Because while it's in circulation, you are effectively, it is a staking event for our stablecoin. Okay, awesome. That makes sense. And you mentioned an audit. It's the same audit that uh, the same company that did the audit for Hex. Is that being done, or that's already been done? You can share some of the insight that was. Yeah, share. yeah, yeah. So we had an economic audit done by Dr. Stalio Kampakis, which is on our website at bankx.io. And then we start our smart contract security audit on July fourth, and that will go for seven weeks. So that puts our timeline to launch at September. Um, which is around sort of PulseCon. Um, so, okay. uh, so yeah, it's kind of all working out. We, we were a little, uh, you know, unfortunately we were hoping the, the coin fabric audit would have been sooner, but uh, there was this uh, huge demand for audits and that was the earliest we could get. So yeah. that's, uh, unfortunately that's our timeline, but uh, it's a great way to continue to build our community and do interviews like this while we, uh, while we prepare for the launch. Um, I will not release a stable coin uh, without an audit. Like, oh, man. Uh, it's just uh, not with what we're, you know, there's been multiple hacks that we've learned about. And, and then also, I think economically, uh, understanding that we have everything covered, um, especially what, with what we've seen with Terra Luna. So I think we've done, we've, we, we've, we've spent a lot of time to make sure we're doing the right thing with that while. Definitely. It's a wild, wild west out here. So Bank <laughs> is introducing a first of its kind integrated protocol owned liquidity. Can you explain what the benefits uh, are and how does it help BankX? Yeah, so I think what's important with a liquidity pool is that what we've learned from Olympus Dow is that the protocol owns it so that uh, the, the market or you know, owners or developers of the of the protocol can't just yank the liquidity for yeah. whatever, whatever. It's a rug pull, or you know, this idea of renting liquidity, right? Where um, someone clones your product and then uh, they offer a little higher rewards and sort of yeah. the same token, and then all the liquidity pulls. So, yeah. so we took a lot of the lessons learned from Olympus Dow and and having the smart contract control the liquidity pool. So we offer very aggressive incentives when there is liquidity need within the system. So basically what we do while is uh, we offer incentives to keep the liquidity pool at 20% of the value of the, of the stable coins minted. So if we have say a hundred million stable coin minted, the incentives drive the, the market to make sure that the liquidity pool is, has at least 20 million. So this concept that we've uh, bringing to the market now that we sort of have that framework of what a, a protocol on liquidity is uh, system, um, we introduced this idea of the integrated protocol on liquidity, which you mentioned, which uh, basically has the liquidity pool serves a function in the tokenomics of the system. 
So what we talked about earlier was how HEX taught us how you can inflate a currency to create a deflationary environment. And we've applied that to the stable coin. We have a sort of a last line of defense is that if there's too much inflation in our tokenomics or, yeah. or token economy, what the system will do is after you sell into the liquidity pool of the bank X pair, it will, uh, if we are in an inflationary state, it will burn those bank X tokens after the seller has captured the value. So um, with, the pro with the liquidity pool acting as sort of the treasury, it can keep inflation at a net deflationary state. And so that's never been done before. And, and that, what, that is what IPOL is that we're another one of our innovations that we're bringing to the stablecoin market. Looking forward to seeing how that works. That sounds awesome. So now that yeah, we're yeah. Bank X more, and we've mentioned Terra a few times, I need to ask, um, is there any chance that Bank X and that new stablecoin sees like a death spiral, uh, a depeg? Um, you know, is there any risks with your algorithmic stablecoin? Because most of these risks weren't mentioned when Terra was, you know, tearing and on a huge uptrend. Are there any risks with BankX and your stablecoin? So I think the flaw that we've, you know, we analyzed Terra Luna and, and, yeah. and we, we, we thought, you know, it's, it's shown itself, it's got a, a big market cap, but I've always had a concern with any stable coin that does not have collateral backing it. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's sort of always been the issue. But what I did like, or what I do like about Terra Luna was, was this, this burning of one token to mint the other to create these arbitrage opportunities to maintain the peg. And so I think that works, but when you're in this death spiral, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter what's going on. So I, I think in general, Terra Luna realized that they needed to back this collateral. That's why they created the, the, the Luna Foundation Guard. But I think they were a little late um, and you can't, you can't really design a system after the fact. Like you, you have to come into it with, yeah. hey, this is a collateral backed stable coin. So I wouldn't put us as, hey, uh, Bank X is like Terra Luna. Like we, yeah. we have mimicked their, their, their burn minting capabilities as another price stabilization mechanism, but we are more like a FRAX protocol or a, a collateral back stable coin, which I think have already proven uh, themselves to be a, a much better way to be a stable coin because you know that you can always go and redeem collateral uh, just like banks were supposed to be when we had a gold-backed currency, right, um, with fiat, and now they don't have that anymore. So um, what's different is we have what I think four price stabilization mechanisms as opposed to Terra Luna's two, and then we also have collateral back uh, uh, with other cryptocurrencies. So we maintain the decentralization using other crypto, uh, as the collateral, uh, where Terra Luna, I think, um, you know, taught us some really, you know, taught us some price stabilization mechanism, but they also taught us that you need collateral. And I think what's probably going on behind the scenes, this is just sort of my hypothesis, is they're probably redesigning the Phoenix One chain to have a, a collateral back stable coin. Um, I just don't see how you can, and, and I think while just to sort of add on that, is I think your collateral, because I'm often asked like, well, what about other collateral, like put some altcoins and all that stuff. I, I don't want to do that because I think your stable coin for where you're deployed needs to have the native blockchain token as the collateral, because then you're really tied to that blockchain that uh, about the value of that, of that system. You start to, to branch off, you, you can get some more volatility. Not to say that the native blockchain token like Ethereum or Pulse won't be volatile, but it's so integral to a blockchain that that the native token is used for gas fees, as an example, and for staking and all that, that I think it's a, a much safer way to do it. Um, that's sort of why my philosophy with, with that. I agree with it. So what other utility does holding BankX offer to holders? We mentioned HEX and like the certificate of deposit. What, what kind of uh, pools or other utility does it offer for holders? Yes, I think while the, uh, the stable coin has, so we, we do uniqueness around what we peg to. So we, we peg to the price of one gram of silver. Yeah. So if you're in a stable coin and you, you sort of see fiat being inflated away, 
we have that uniqueness in, in the market where we're pegging to one gram of silver. And we think one day that's going to be a big event for us where we're sort of, there's a reset in the true value of silver and sort of precious metals. Um, and I think that, I think in general, uh, we have all the same utility as any other stable coin, like cross-border payments, neutral position for trading, not having to go back and forth between the fiat on and off ramp. Um, and, and then it's sort of, then it's this additional thing of earning interest where it becomes a stable coin for individual freedom and, and you're able to create an income because you've created currency and you become really the, really the bank. Um, so I think those are the key utilities. And, and we do also have a certificate of deposit uh, inspired by HEX. So you can buy the bank X token and stake it. And, and that becomes a, you know, that's part of our, tokenomic strategy to help to create a deflationary environment. So, so there's sort of the, the IPOL strategy, which we talked about, which has a, a role in the deflationary environment. Uh, we incentivize staking the way that HEX does in a CD. And then, and then the minting of a stable coin also becomes a net deflationary um, mm -hmm. event there. So, so those are sort of the, the, the key levers that you'll read about in our economic audit. Yeah, I really like that it's pegged against silver. That's that's different. You don't. Uh, that's that's really cool. And stable coins, as we mentioned, you know, throughout the the AMA, they're a huge factor. It's an important piece in the whole crypto ecosystem. Um, and also, stable coin supplies are at all time highs right now. How does BankX plan to capture some of that market cap? Yeah, I think with our, I think what we're doing unique to the market, I think that's going to get a lot of attraction for the individual user. Um, a, another utility is the, you know, pairing against other crypto as a, as the price, right? So I think that could be a way. Um, when we release, we have plans on our roadmap to build decentralized apps that drive usage for the stable coin. Right. Um, and then I think partnering with other protocols that would, that would, you know, have crypto assets. So you look at some of uh, some of these protocols, like in, uh, insurance protocols, or uh, even protocols like Olympus Dow. So we saw Frax really uh, increase their TVL by working with those um, with with Olympus Dow and, and similar things. So we think uh, those systems that have treasury would love to mint our stablecoin and have that in the treasury, and it's increasing their their revenue just by creating a currency. So I think there, there's multiple ways that we we see where we where we have a, a great advantage in the market to to capture that that market share. And, and then I just think the general sort of decentralization movement. I think people as they get into crypto are going to start to move away uh, from sort of USD, you know, Tether and. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. Not that they're not great, but I think we're we're moving the ball down the field with decentralization, uh, and especially if there's some sort of regulation that comes, that I think people will want to see something like that. That's what I was going to ask next. Well, first, Frax did an awesome job with partnering up with a bunch of DeFi protocols, so you know that's a great route. Um, but after the collapse of the UST, are you worried about any sort of regulation um, in terms of legality? Uh, are algo stable coins under the scope? Do you guys, is, are there any, you know, pose of any issues right now? So I'm not afraid of regulation. It yeah. might be good in some senses. Um, but I, I just don't think while that they are going to be able to stop it. So, so we've set up bank X to where uh, once we deploy and we release version two, um, the, the admin keys will be burned um, and this system will just live on its own, right? We'll decentralize the front end. And so I wrote a, I wrote a post on Reddit that's in our uh, Telegram group in the pin message. I, I, I did a full analysis of, uh, of sort of the history and evolution of stable coins and why regulation really at the end of the day doesn't matter. Um, so um, so that really is, I think, the short story is is uh, we could, we took the route of decentralization, so it doesn't matter what regulation comes along. But for those more centralized stable coins, it probably will help because it will probably force some more transparency of Tether. Like, what are they actually backing it with, and do they really have the USD backing yeah. the exact number of Tether that's out there? So. 
I think it's good from a centralized stablecoin perspective. And then as we move to what more like what Bank X is, where it's a, a, a stable coin for individual freedom, truly decentralized all the way through, um, it has no effect on, on those type of tokens, I think at least. Okay, awesome. I'll definitely share your uh, stablecoin Reddit post in the description for people to read. We touched a bit okay. about the Terra, you know, Terra Luna setting up the Luna Foundation and buying, you know, upwards of a billion dollars of Bitcoin to protect the peg. Worst case scenario, and I'm just kind of, you know, kind of highlighting it because we just saw what happened. Billions of dollars was lost. It's a big event. I mean, yeah, that's a, a huge big event. event. So worst case scenario. How do you guys plan to protect the peg? Like, you know, what happens if somebody did choose to attack it? Yeah. So certainly the peg is a, is a point of attack or attack vector, yeah, which yeah. we learned that Terra Luna in its present state doesn't work, right? So uh, I think the insurance for someone who's created, a, who's created the currency and pledged pledge their collateral is that, that you have that collateral, right? So I think- yeah. Yeah. When, it all, when it boils down to it, there's always this decentralized custody of your collateral for the, for the stable coin that can never be liquidated. So you know that you can always retrieve that, yeah. right? Um, from, from a peg perspective, I think Terra Luna, you know, w- when things are well, I think their, their price stabilization mechanisms work. Um, yeah. Also, if you look at Frax, it's done very well in maintaining the peg, um, yeah. Yeah. right? So... Uh, so, you, so you still have this arbitrage opportunity where you could, if it's under the peg, the market's incentivized to buy it because they could sell it at the price it should be later. You, you, um, you have that, that burn mint capability that Terra Luna shows us is, has worked. Um, and, and then you have this, uh, what Maker Dallas taught us, where you have this minting and redeeming aspect uh, where you, you know, if, if it's above the peg, then you would bring in collateral on mint because you have a profit in the market, right? Mm-hmm. So, the, so this, uh, that's sort of that third way of price stabilization that's been proven in the market. Wow. And then the fourth way, which is unique to Frax, is this, is this adjustable collateral percentage of the native blockchain token and, and the utility token, Bank X. So what Frax has shown us is that if the, the price of the stable coin is above the peg, then the system will lower the amount of Ethereum in this example or Pulse needed to mint. And so that brings in more minters and increasing the supply. So where we had trouble with Terra Luna um, with no collateral and only a couple price stabilization mechanism, when you look at Bank X, we really took out all the ones that have worked and, yeah. and we have collateral um, as the ultimate insurance for the stable coin. So I honestly, wow, I feel very good about our, our position and what we're doing um, and what we're using that we know works, even though Terra Luna ended up uh, sort of collapsing and, and just erasing sort of $40 billion. Um, their, their, one, their price stabilization mechanism does work until there's complete uh, loss of faith in the market forces, right? So you sort of you saw with uh, Terra Luna. I think they're still analyzing, but what we could see is it it sort of started with the removal of 90 million, I believe, uh, UST from Curve, and then a big whale followed that, and then it lost its peg a little bit, and then the market got spooked, right? So I think if you have a col- I think if you have a collateral based stable coin, so you have those this combination of algorithmic functions and, and collateral behind it. The market knows that they're, they're, they don't they don't need to get spooked because they have uh, they have uh, complete control of retrieving the collateral off the blockchain with no central authority controlling it, which I think is another issue with Terra, where they were sort of adding this after the fact and they're in control of all of these billions of Bitcoin. So I think if they come out with another stablecoin, it's a total redesign, um, and we're already there, right? So. Um, we're coming out with uh, sort of everything that Terra had, right? You have the anchor protocol and, you know, all of which, which I think there's been some talk like, oh, was that a, was that a Ponzi scheme or whatever, um, where the way that we've done it has already been a proven economic uh, wow. sort of profitable way of, of doing it. So I feel really good about the position of, of what we've set up with this. Um, it's really excited to get this out there and, and see if the market feels the same way. Um, but I think we're in a good spot, actually. 
No, I definitely like to hear that, Lance. People holding stablecoin, they want a sense of security in such a volatile market. Do you guys, I mean, BankX plan to offer any sort of um, insurance against the peg or plan to work with the protocol that offers any sort of insurance? It's, it's interesting. Um, I, I can look at that. That's, I've never been asked that while, to be quite honest with you. So I, I, I don't really have a, a yes or no answer on that because I... You know, if there was some sort of peg insurance or insur insurance with that, I mean, there there is like, I think there's things like Nexus Mutual and some of those other ones that are more of a smart contract oriented, which the market could just go do themselves. But yeah. as far as uh, other type of insurance, what we've tried to do is because there's collateral, that really is the ultimate insurance, right? So if yeah. you have the stable coin, you can go and 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 basically with no one involved, just get your value back out of it. So I would, while I would look at uh, the collateral on the blockchain as, as the ultimate insurance. And, and that's why a stable coin has to have collateral. I just, I just don't see how the winner uh, or the winners say the top three or whatever uh, aren't collateral backed. I just, I, I'm not seeing how, how that uh, that's gonna work ultimately. No, it makes sense. You always have your collateral and it's never going to be taken away. You can just redeem it any time. That's exciting. Yep. I'm, I'm yep. excited to see how banks like BankX performs. So for people watching, is it too late for them to invest? I, you did mention a sacrifice. So can you go into the details uh, of the sacrifice? Yeah, absolutely. So we did a sacrifice, a, a dual sacrifice phase on Ethereum and Binance. So because our launch was moved to September because of the smart contract audit, we're doing a sacrifice phase on, on Pulse Chain. So this isn't an investment. So if people know about sacrifice phases, this is, uh, you know, this is sacrificing cryptocurrency for a political statement. So this way it doesn't fall under securities laws and, and, and those, those things. So uh, for sacrificing cryptocurrency, you get a volume bonus and X points. So the X points have no value, but they convert to bank X tokens at the launch of the pulse chain deployment. And the XSD stablecoin and the bank X token on pulse chain will both launch with no value. And then from there, wow. um, they will go from, uh, you know, they'll, the market can decide what, what they're worth. Um, because we won't do any tax reporting or anything like that. So, so the general structure applies. Um, we have a leaderboard bonus where the top wallets are get a volume bonus at the end. Um, we also in, in have a very sort of steep volume bonus curve. So in the pre-sacrifice phase, there will be a 5.25 volume bonus. And then when the sacrifice phase starts, uh, it'll be it'll drop a quarter point down to 5x volume bonus. And then every week it'll go down to a quarter point uh, until the sacrifice phase ends. And then we have a unique bonus that no one has ever done in a sacrifice phase called the time machine bonus. And what that does is uh, incentivize telegram groups to pull their sacrifice together yeah. and for, for large whales to incentivize them to do large sacrifices where Every 25,000 block of sacrifice in a single sacrifice, so it's not your total value, you would move back one week in the volume bonus. So it's the equivalent of adding 0.25 to your volume bonus. And that caps at the pre-sac uh, volume bonus of 5.25. So an example would be is let's say we're in the week of a 4X volume bonus yeah. and you sacrifice 100,000, that moves you back four weeks or you're at 5X. So just by sacrificing a larger amount, you, you really accelerate your volume bonus there. Um, so that's unique and that's called the time machine bonus that we, we have within um, uh, the bank X sacrifice phase on Pulse Chain. And so that's gonna start up very soon while, um, I'm going to make announcements in our Telegram group here within the next days. It's, it's pretty close. Looking forward to it. Algo stable coins have become very popular. How does BankX plan to stay ahead of its uh, competition? For example, we've seen Tron launch their stable coin USDD, and they're offering 40% APY. Yes. So I think we're staying ahead of the market by, by offering a more complete protocol with all the, all the elements that we talked about, right? So no one is doing a stable coin like the way we're doing it. Yeah. Um, with Tron's stable coin, to me, looks like a clone of Terra Luna. 
So if I were him, I would look up, I'd be a little worried, right? So he basically took Terra Luna and it's copy from everything that I could see, it looked like a Terra Luna um, with sort of the same LFG. Yeah. I've got collateral that I'm centrally controlling. And then I have anchor protocol, but instead of 20%, I'm 40%, right? So I, I don't know that, uh, I, I would be a little concerned about what he's doing Definitely. with that. Um, and then just sort of the, some of the perception of anchor protocol, like, well, how are they paying these returns? Yeah. Like for BankX, we're very clear about what we're doing. We're inflating the currency, but we're incentivizing behavior that creates a net deflationary effect. So HEX has been well proven with that, whether you like it or not, you can't argue with the idea that inflating a currency to incentivize staking actually creates a net deflationary effect. And we took that concept to a stable coin. So I think our economics are very solid. I think we're, we're very uh, um, solid from a perspective of there's collateral backing it. And the protocols that we, we've learned from and are inspired by are, are very well proven, at least up to, up to this point. So uh, I wouldn't look at us while just to sort of ma make the distinction that we're not we're not an uh, an algorithmic stablecoin. I would I would classify us more as a, a partially collateralized, partially algorithmic. So we've we've got everything that's good about uh, the different systems and and not the stuff that's bad. I think that's the best way to to look at how we're how we're approaching this stablecoin um, release of what we're doing. No, I like it all. Definitely makes sense. After listening to everything, I understand it more and I'm looking forward to it. So I appreciate your awesome. time, Lance. Is there anything else you wanted to share and kind of end with here? Um, no, I think if people want to learn more, they could go to our website, www.bankx.io. I've, I've shot a ton of videos about, um, we have a great explainer video. We have different two minute videos that do the fundamentals. And then they go deeper and deeper, depending in, in all the way to a master class. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your time, Lance, and I appreciate everything. Thank you.